Welcome to Win the Day from Back to the Bible. I'm your coach, Pastor Nat, and today we're going to talk about King Jesus. The trial of Jesus is the best example of injustice that history has ever recorded. A series of erroneous trials that held no evidence, no witnesses, and no real accusations. He's gone from person to person with the hopes of conviction and a death sentence. In chapter 18, Jesus is brought before Pilate, who finds no fault in him. So he gives the Jews an opportunity to change their minds. He offers to release a prisoner, which was customary for the Jews at the Passover. Pilate has miscalculated their decision. They say, give us Barabbas, the robber. But what you may not know is Barabbas was way more than just a robber. According to the book of Matthew, he was a notorious prisoner. Mark and Luke identify him as a murderer. He was an insurrectionist. He was a true enemy of Rome. Surely the Jews would not take Barabbas, but that's exactly what they do. What will Pilate do now? Let's go back to the Bible for the answer. In John chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. Again, I can't believe what I'm reading. Jesus is innocent. The religious leaders know it. Pilate is sure of it. He will let him go, right? No. He takes him and he has his soldiers flog him. Now, flogging goes beyond whipping. The Romans would use a cat of nine tails. It was a whip with strands that had pieces of glass, bones, metal shards, and metal balls to destroy a person's body. It was common for a person's veins to be shredded and their bowels to be exposed. Their bones would be visible for all to see. This was a horrific punishment for anyone, but unthinkable for an innocent man. If that wasn't enough, they try to break him mentally. They place a crown of thorns and push it on his head. They did this to create physical pain and mental anguish. A soldier takes off his robe and he places it on Jesus's body. Then they humiliate and insult him by mocking him. Hail, hail, King of the Jews. What a horrific sight. Pilate comes out after this torture and says, here he is. He's innocent, but we've punished him and humiliated him. He is not guilty, but we've tortured him. So he is broken and humiliated. Are you happy? But then to add some insult to the injury, he says, Ide anthropos, behold the man. Not behold the king, behold the man. A true mockery of Jesus and a true appeal to the Jews. But the Jews don't care. They want blood. They want death. They scream, crucify him. But you can see Pilate is done. He says, he is your problem. He's been tortured. You take him and crucify him. It's clear Pilate was losing control, and this proves it. He is giving the power back to the Jews. 
For all the injustice we see in the world, nothing compares to what Jesus experienced here and will experience on the cross. But this human injustice is for divine justice. Remember, Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus endured this humiliation, pain, torture, and hatred for us. This is Jesus. This is our Savior. He is our true King. So let's worship King Jesus today. He deserves our best and our all.